Now, let's look at this example. Express f of x in the form a times x minus h squared plus k. OK. The given function is f of x, which has this form, negative 4x squared minus 32x minus 65. We want to change that into this form. Then we will know where the vertex is. OK. So that's the purpose. Now, since there is a constant here, so the step one would be leave this negative 65 alone. We don't handle that. What we like to handle is the first two terms. Okay. The first two terms, we can see we can pull 4 out. If 4 is out, negative 4 is out, then you know negative 4 times positive 8, you get negative 32. So basically, if you pull negative 4 out, the first one is just x squared. The second term is going to be positive 8x. OK, since we didn't do anything with negative 65, we put it here. We want to make a complete square. So what do we need here? Apparently here it has only x squared and 8x. There is no complete square right here. So what can we do? We need to make a complete square. That's the purpose. To make a complete square, what do we need? We know if we have a 16 here, then x squared plus 8x plus 16 will make a complete square. OK. How do we know? Look, x plus 4 squared is x plus 4 times x plus 4. If you FOIL it out, x times x is x squared. and uh, x times 4 is 4x, outer product. Inner product is 4 times x. The last product is 4 times 4, so you have 4 squared. And you know right here, 4, 4, 4x, 4x is 8x. OK. And 14, uh, 4 squared is 16. OK. And you can see here 8x, 8x x squared, x squared, and 16, 16. So you see right here, if there were 16, we can make a complete square. OK. But how did we find out? It's actually like this. 8 divided by 2, you have a 4. So you want to put 4 right here. OK. And then 4 squared is going to be 16. So you know you need a 16. OK. Now, and then since there were no 16 here, if you add 16, you have a minus. You have to minus 16. OK. And then it will go back to the previous one. OK, great. Now, those three terms together, OK, from x squared plus 8x plus 16 is going to be a complete square. And then there is a 16 positive there, a 16 negative 6, a negative 16. We put it down here. Uh, those three terms is going to be a complete square. And then negative 16, we leave it right here. Again, we didn't do anything with negative 65. We copy it down. OK. Now, uh, 
let's move up. Negative 4 times this quantity is negative 4 times x plus 4 squared. Remember, negative 4 has 2 times negative 16 uh, distributive property. Okay, And again, we keep negative 65 down here. Okay, now, now you can see negative 4 times negative 16 is positive 64. Positive 64 with negative 65, we have a negative 1. And at the front, you may just leave this one, negative 4 uh, times the quantity x plus 4. But you know, plus 4 is negative, negative 4. It will make positive. Okay. Basically, this is the final answer. Negative 4 times x plus 4 squared minus 1. The reason I'm doing so is x minus negative 4 squared, we know, you know, we want this form, right? x minus h plus k. And here, we know h is actually negative 4. Okay? The reason I'm writing in this way is that we want to have a vertex. The vertex will be minus this number. Whatever it is, is going to be negative 4, okay? And positive 1 is the y-axis. This will be the vertex. Okay? And you can draw the picture. Alright? Yeah. So you see, basically, express this one. It's not really that hard. Okay? They are only like one, two, three. Actually, four steps. Four steps. And this is the key step right here. Okay, I will see you next time.